when things in life spin out of control we forget that we are even the children of god were you ever in a place like that today i'm going to share how god rescued me from the dregs of darkness when i was flirting with suicide and self harm Hashtag life happens. You are listening to Arpna Saladi. Most men lead lives of quiet desperation and go to the grave with the song still in them. Henry David Thoreau said these words. I felt like I was one among those people who will die without knowing the purpose of all the pain, without knowing the purpose of my life, and with the song still in my heart. Because, like I told you, my parents decided that they would, they have dedicated me to the Lord, and. Uh, but eventually as life kept moving i forgot my parents forgot and they got me married not to a pastor but to a doctor i was not so strong about the promise my parents made to god and i guess maybe because of all the hardships they went through they too lacked enough faith to get me married to another full time minister but god a phrase i love but god i believe that god has his own purposes nothing happens accidentally in a believer's life me marrying a doctor was not an accident every maverick molecule moves only through the sovereign will of god and i believe that whatever happens in our life it's ultimately god's work of removing the dross to refine us and to help us to be changed into the likeness of christ of course all this i understood later after a lot of struggle but there was a phase in my life that it felt like god was silent it wasn't that i was not attending the church or i was not being active i was not reading my bible and stuff everything was normal i was attending the church i mean i was like church attendance was the most important thing that was in my life all the activities all the prayers you name it i was there like even if there were prayers every day i just used to go but nothing helped me i mean it was of no use because i never was able to feel the presence of god or the spirit of god through you know whatever i was doing there was always this anxiety in me and this stress in me where i was uh, trying to please people and to go out of the way to help them do stuff for them yet i couldn't satisfy anybody or fix those problems i was always seeking for approval from people and in other words people were the one who were driving my life and making decisions for me i never realized that i cannot change anybody's perspectives unless god talks to them unless god speaks to them and doing this like a cycle was exhausting and of course it is impossible to, I, i did i did not even realize that it was impossible to please people there was an urge in me to tell people that i was being misunderstood that i was being misrepresented that you don't even know who i am and so many other things relating to my identity and who i was eventually all this was taking such a hit on me that uh, even my health was deteriorating i had problems in my stomach and uh, i was literally physically shivering when i was in few places in few situations and uh, I, i did not even have strength to stand so while all this was happening i really did not understand what was going on in my life and all that i was going through that phase where i started accusing myself and blaming myself where i was thinking that god has cursed me and he left me alone because of my sins because of my past sins because of who i am how bad i am he left me alone because i was not prepared for anything that life had to offer at this point of time rather than stopping and saying that lord what do you want me to learn out of this I really lost my mind and my life was spinning out of control. It just felt like all hope was lost. Now to cope up with this kind of uh, depression and uh, this mental state that I was in, I started resorting to sleep and uh, just staring into the wall and zoning out and you know so many other things like that. I would wake up in the morning, I would cook and then I would sleep. Again I would wake up, I would cook. and i would sleep if there were any prayers or something in the evening i would attend them then again come home and sleep i was deteriorating day by day and sleep was like a way out for me to deal with my depression because i thought okay if i sleep i'm not going to think anything because if i was awake 
my mind was like running faster than a marathon runner in all kinds of directions and all this was because our marriage was going through a very rough phase there were three times in my life where i felt so hopeless and i felt so given up on life that i thought okay this is the end of life and there was one time where there was some kind of poisonous substance in my home and i was like okay i'm going to take this and i'm going to die because i don't want to live this meaningless life and i feel life is all hopeless i don't see a purpose i don't see a meaning all this all this me attending the church me doing all kinds of stuff and everything but this is what was running in my mind it so happened that i was almost about to end my life but then at that one last moment i just sent a text message to one of my youth leader and he immediately called me and spoke to me like for about one hour or two hours and that helped me you know come to my senses and stop thinking whatever i was thinking so a shout out to all those youth leaders and people who so patiently listen and uh, counsel and help because for somebody like me it really really helped so when somebody comes out to you with an issue in their life let us be patient listeners even if we cannot counsel them enough or give them proper advices maybe if we could just be listeners i think that would make a lot of difference so that was one time where god helped me and there was another time where i attempted to end my life again and the same thoughts where your body gets so heated up your mind gets blocked and you really lose your senses all logic seems lost and your mind just shuts down when you are in such a kind of a situation unless god pulls you out i'm telling you there is no way out because you are like at the brink of hell i even like i attempted to you know end my life i have uh, literally in the act you know god stopped me from doing it i can say that it was all because of the grace of god and his god stops us at that point of time we cannot get out of such kind of things now when life was looking like a dead end how did i eventually get out of all this it's because of the grace of god it is because of the word of god it is because of the truth that is in god that he upholds his children and he lifts them up i've searched the entire internet but i haven't found any relevant information about problems in our marriages in an indian context the problem in our culture is that people are just being pushed into this lifetime commitment without any prior counseling or help or knowing what marriage truly is what does it signify for you as a christian that is why i suggest all the young people who are waiting to get married who are preparing themselves to get married to attend workshops and counseling sessions by different bible based uh, christian organizations we have a lot of them now because you need to be ready to play your role as a wife and play your role as a husband you need to know what are your privileges as a wife what are your privileges as a husband what is your role how does god expect you to be a leader or how does god expect you to be a follower how do things work according to the bible and according to uh, the marriage in god's sight what is my role unless we are prepared to play this role i feel we will end up in crisis and ultimately i'm going to suffer the person who is with me is going to suffer and that would eventually lead to an unhealthy marriage which is not so god honoring for the world marriage is like two people coming together to enjoy life to fulfill all their dreams and wishes and everything else but what is marriage for a christian i've learned it the hard way that more than the joy or happiness we as christians want to portray to the world that we are representing christ and his bride we as christians are literally showing the world who christ is and who the church is to christ just like in hosea we see right god said this is how much i love israel so hosea you go take a prostitute and marry her that, that was like a live example to show the people like a living example exactly i feel marriage is also that it's like christ and his bride the husband and wife 
But the irony of it is the church itself has kept this biblical idea aside and started promoting an ideology of happiness which is related to marriages, which is influenced by movies and which is influenced by the world. But what I feel is if a wife idolizes the husband and the husband idolizes the wife and they both are so happy and then they want to buy a house, a big car and then after that they would have children then they worship their children. Why do we even need God? Why do we even need God? But this is exactly the formula that the 21st century church is selling for a successful life. But what I came to realize is that happiness is a feeling and feelings are fleeting. You just can't be happy every other day, accept it or not. I can't be happy. What makes one person happy today might not make me happy the next minute. And uh, what makes me happy might not be good for me. For example, if I like to eat french fries, I want to eat them every day because they make me very happy. But this might not be good to me. Of course, it's not good to me because it's not going to nourish my body. It is not going to give me health and that could potentially lead me to harm. That is why God, He defines His relationship with us not on uh, uh, transitory or, um, you know, circumstantial feelings of happiness, but He does it on the binding commitment of mutual love. God is more concerned with our relationship with Him than he is with our happiness. Now, doing this may not lead us to happiness per se, but it can definitely lead us to higher functioning families, a better relationship, a being balanced individuals while we are staying connected and having less problems We will because we will be able to choose wisely to make better decisions and to focus on our responsibilities. I feel that happiness is not the definition of a marriage. You know, even if we have to define it from what Christ did for us upon the cross, I'm sure Jesus wouldn't have been feeling happy upon the cross, right? It was suffering when he was on the cross, but he took it up because he loves the father and he loves us. It is love that drives a relationship and happiness is not love. Love is a commitment. Love is action. So in life or in death, in sickness and in pain, Love is going to stay, but happiness is not going to stay. Of course, I learned all this the hard way. Even today, I always tell, if it is not for God and His Word, I'm only a moment away from going back to be depressed. You know, even till today, if I do not read God's Word, if God's Word does not convict me, if God's Word does not give me hope, my life is again going to go down that spiral. Because our hope in God should not be based on our situation. Our joy in God should not be based on our temporary stuff in life. The purpose for existing should become to live for God and to die for God. Now, in our marriage, this is what we discovered, that our purpose is primarily to live for God and to die for God and all the other things follow. Until I reached that point, until we reached that point, we found no meaning and no reason why we should even be alive, why I should even be alive. Like Augustine says, our hearts are made for you, O Lord, and they can never find rest until they rest in you. Take my word, guys. No human being can fill that God-shaped vacuum in your life until you discover that only God, only God can help you, give you a purpose, give you a meaning to life. And regardless of what we are going through, when we come to this establishing foundational truth that for me to live is Christ or to die is gain, like Paul said, and the truth that whatever I do is motivated by my love for God, unless we come to this foundational truth, I think nothing will seem meaningful in life. Let us depend on the foundational truth of God's word. Let's not depend on feelings, guys. Feelings are just foolishness. But when we establish our life and our thinking, our worldview, the perspective, the purpose of our life on the foundational truth of God and His Word and who He is to us, and when everything is motivated from that vantage point of view, I think then life will make sense. When you go through situations like what I went through on the dead end, when you want to give up on life, please, I request you to reach out to somebody and call and speak to them and if you think that nobody understands and nobody knows what you're going through I am sure that when you go down on your knees and just say help Lord and cry out truly from your heart 
I am telling you, help is not far away. God will attend the prayers of his people because he said, I am very, very close to the broken hearted. So here's this podcast to all those people who are suffering, who are learning through life. Yes, God teaches stuff through life. And I do not regret a single moment of what God has taught me. It's because of what God has taken me through. I am where I am today and I know God in a more personal way. And even if God wants to take me through another refining fire, you know, I will be ready because I am not capable of doing it myself on my own strength. But God's strength is made perfect in my weakness and I am willing to walk with God no matter what the cost. It takes a lot of effort to reach to this point and a lot of pain and a lot of heartbreak. But I'm telling you, when God takes us through trials and tribulations, rather than saying, Lord, I just want to give up here. I just want to end my life. I just want to, you know, there's no purpose. There's no meaning. Why should I even go forward? If we stop asking God, Lord, why me? Because we always want to rely on ourselves and start depending upon God and ask Lord, what do you want me to learn out of this situation? What is the takeaway? How do you want me to become once the trial is done? What is this takeaway that you want me to learn out of this pain? What is it that you want me to learn? How do I become Christ-like when this fire ends? When we ask these questions, I think there is more purpose and meaning to what God is doing in our lives. I'm a person who very firmly believe that there is no better cure for any psychological problem than studying the word of God. Because I have been there, I've experienced it and I am telling you, depend upon the truth, base your life upon the truth, study the word, practice the word and preach the word. Like Tozer said, we should always remember, regardless of the situations that we go through in our life, Tozer always says, and this is like the motto of my life, whatever happens, God is always right. God is always good. If you remember these two truths, God is always right. We will never question God. If we say that God is always good, we will never question His goodness in our lives, even when things spin out of control. So I hope this podcast will be helpful for you not to make mistakes like I made, but base your faith and your truth not on feelings, but on the divine inerrant, infallible, comforting word of God. Thank you for joining till now. Hope this will help you in some way. If you feel that somebody is struggling with mental illness or going through a lot of pain, please do share this podcast. And if you like, please leave your comments because that would be really encouraging for us. You can also suggest what do you want us to talk about. We can discuss more about our feelings, our fears and our faith on hashtag life happens with Arpana Saladi. See you all in the next podcast. Take care. Bye-bye.